Greetings, everyone. I am Dr. Lisa Gunderson, known in my community as Dr. Lisa or Dr. G by some of my students. And I just want to welcome you to You Can't Be Switzerland. Thank you again for clicking on this as we discuss very important issues with regard to counseling and racism. I want to first begin by letting you know that I am speaking to you today from the Kwangan speaking territories, specifically of the Songhees and Esquimalt nations. And one of the first things that we can do is really consider what it means when we think and we hear about our territorial acknowledgements. You see, for me, doing this type of work on lands that have been cared for by for, for a millennia by people who truly understand the impacts of systemic racism is not only humbling, but it really gives me great pause and it really speaks to my spirit about what I am doing. You see, when you think about the territory that you're on right now, it's critically important to make sure that you're not just hearing it in one ear and going out the other. That is why the first slide I have for you is to please take a look at www.native-land.ca and begin to really explore some of these questions, like what intention do you have to disrupt and dismantle colonialism beyond this territorial acknowledgement? And you will also notice that there is a mobile app that you are able to access. So wherever you are, you can see whose territory you're on and learn more about that and our responsibilities. So when talking about racism, as you've been reading throughout the text, there's varied definitions and a lot of connected definitions, especially with systemic racism. You can see some here on the screen. Clearly in this four or five minute bit, this is not going to be covered. Today, I wanna to speak specifically though about an issue that I don't find is addressed enough before we even get into these definitions that you see. First, you have to make a decision. You have to decide which side of the systemic racism space you're gonna be on. Because you see, you can't be Switzerland. If Switzerland was ever Switzerland, right? Meaning that you can't be neutral when it comes to addressing issues of systemic racism in our profession, professionally and personally. You are either engaging in behaviors, actions, thoughts that are helping to sustain and perpetuate a systemic racist system or that are helping to disrupt dismantle or abolish a racist systemic system. You can't be on the fence with this. You either have to decide that you're gonna go one way or another. And that's what I mean by you can't be Switzerland. You see, none of us are immune. You were born into an ist system, racism, sexism, heterosexism, ableism, etc. No one is immune from the racial, gender, and sex identity biases of our society. No one is immune from the ableistic biases of our society, right? Much of this is outside of our level of conscious awareness, as Dr. Daryl Sue says. And we engage in actions that unintentionally oppress and discriminate against others. That is problematic on its own, and then extremely problematic as counselors. As a counselor, you're gonna to have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable as you explore this space for yourself. If done right, going towards anti-racism, especially in our field, you're gonna have more questions. And that's the key. This is not about being politically correct. This is not about being culturally competent in terms of a checkbox. This is about you making a decision about the type of counseling you're going to be doing for the life of the time you're in the profession and for your life. 
This is about a lifelong journey. And if you understand that, then you understand that you're going to make mistakes along the way, that the longer you're on, the less mistakes you'll make. But it also means that you're going to be questioning. And especially because many of us have been trained in a system that wasn't designed for Ibok persons. We are trained in a system that is inherently racist. So when you think about that, there's a lot of unlearning that we need to do and a lot of learning. It's going to be, again, being comfortable with being uncomfortable, more questions, and not seeing this as being politically correct or fulfilling a cultural competency, but understanding it's a lifelong journey. You see, you don't have to have negative intent to have discriminatory outcomes. So when you understand that, you need to dive into understanding what your privileges are and what your power is. Understanding your privilege is key. Because when you understand your privileges, then you can also understand your power and how you can use that effectively in the counseling space. Mia Minga said, I'm disabled and I don't have the option of not thinking about accessibility or ableism ever. If you don't question how you are going to access this video, for example, you're probably acting at a space of ableistic privilege. Power is that ability to define reality and convince other people that it is their definition. I love that definition by Dr. Wade Nobles. But when you think about power in our spaces, it's our ability and official authority to decide many times what we think might be best for our clients. Even if that thinking about what is best is working with them, that's still a decision we're making. It's the ability to decide who's going to have access to resources. It's that capacity that you may have to exercise control, again, consciously or unconsciously over others. And so when you think about your privileges, think about this list. Just take a quick sheet of paper. And as I go through, if that is you, write that down. And that's an area of your privilege. And that becomes then your responsibility to understand your privilege, understand how it's manifesting in your work with your clients, understand the power that comes with that and how you're going to learn to not abuse that power, but to use it towards engaging in anti-isms and especially anti-racism. So if you do not have a visible or invisible disability, please mark down that you have ability status privilege. Age is usually somewhere between kind of that mid thirties to mid fifties range. If you are a Canadian citizen, or a citizen of the country that you're watching this in. For example, if you're a United States citizen, put that in. If your primary language is the language of your country in Canada, that would be English or French, put that down. If your ethnicity as here in Canada is of a Euro descent, you want to write that down. If your education is post-secondary, as it is you're watching this, if your gender is male and your gender identity is cisgender, please put those down. If your income is middle, upper middle income, if you worry about the flower on your latte, you probably need to write that down. If your race is white or some say Caucasian, you will want to write that down. If your religion is Christian, Remember, we don't shut down for Ramadan or Hanukkah. We shut down for Christmas. If your religion is Christian, put that down. And if your sexual identity is heterosexual, please put that down. So if you're pansexual, asexual, bi, gay, lesbian, you would not write down that you have privilege. That is all the time that we have. I really hope that this burns some thought for you that before you're going to tackle all those definitions and spaces of racism and anti-racism you have to make a decision first and that decision is going to be up to you 
not everybody is going to make the same decision, but just know you can't be Switzerland.